Okay, folks, welcome back. Jason here for another episode of What Are We Doing in Photoshop? <clears throat> so this particular episode, I want to show you how we can create a shattered glass effect, in this case on the orange, and how to break it apart and make it look like we've got some glass coming in front of it and uh, kind of magnifying the areas where the glass are broken. I've added a backdrop here just to kind of give it a little bit more effect of a shattered glass. And I've got my orange on a transparent background as a smart object. And I'm going to jump over to my photo here with the glass. And I'm going to take this glass and what I want to do is I want to get rid of the background of this. And I'm not going to go in and do a selection on it because I want to get rid of the white of the background, but I also want to make the glass transparent or translucent so I can still get the look of the glass but I don't want it to be completely clear I need to have a little bit of tone in here so I need to unlock this layer in the glass the layers panel clicking on the lock and then I want to double click to the right to call up my dialog box and in this dialog box I'm going to go down to the blend if at the bottom here Click on the right slider, the white one, which is going to allow me to control everything that's going to be white or light. I'm going to slide that off to the left just a little bit until the white of the background disappears. Now, I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt key, and I'm going to split that slider. And once I split that slider, I can now move this to the left. And you can see as I move this, the glass shards will become more and more transparent. Now I don't want to go all the way so that I lose the glass shards and I only see the darkness of the edges indicating the thickness of the glass. I just want to slide it enough where I can start to see a little bit of transparency, that transparent grid in the background. And I'm just going to slide that back and forth just to see how that's going to look. I don't want to do it too much because I still want some of that color kind of coming through. Once I click OK, I can see that. A good test to see how this is actually going to look in your final one is to put a new layer underneath. So I'm going to go to my new layer button here and I'm going to hold down my command key to add a new layer and holding down the command puts the new layer underneath. And I'm going to go over to my color picker and I've got a color active. Then I'm going to use my option or alt delete to fill the background with a color. So now I can get a sense of how transparent this glass is going to be. And I think I need to go just a little bit more transparent to get that glass to be just a little bit less white or opaque in these areas. So I'm going to go back to my glass layer, double click next to the name, and I'm going to slide that split that I had done originally over a little bit more to see how that looks. Now, I don't need this colored background, so I'm going to delete that. And I've got my glass layer here. And there's two different ways that I can capture this transparency and make sure it is going to be transparent. You'll notice that in my layers panel, it doesn't show that this background is transparent. It still shows that it's white, but it shows transparent here. Well, if I were to take this into my original composite here, that white background is going to give us a problem, even though we have this transparent background. So there's two different ways we could do this. I could convert this to a smart object right here. And once I convert that to a smart object, you'll see that I have that background here. I'm going to undo that. The other way, which is more destructive, is I just create a new layer. And I have a transparent layer and my blend if layer. And I select both of those. And then when I merge those together, which is command E, I can merge those together into my transparent layer. But I'm definitely going to do my smart object because that's going to allow me to come back at any time and adjust this just in case I need it. You never know. I'm going to right click on this layer here. I want to duplicate the layer and I would like to put this into my destination document, which is going to be the one that I was working with, with the orange and the glass in the background. I click OK. And now I'm going to go back to my original document. And here is my document with my shards of glass. Command T for transform. It's quite large, so I have to zoom out here and scale this down so I can get all my shards of glass in here. 
And I can position that so that these pieces of glass can fit in here. And I don't need it to fit completely because I'm going to break each one of these pieces of glass apart. So here I can see that this is looking pretty good <clears throat> with this and I'm ready to get going. Now the glass is fairly transparent and if you wanted to add a color to this, just a little slight hint of color, I can go back to my original smart object here. And in the smart object, what I could do is I could go in and I don't want to add a new layer. I want to add a new fill layer or solid color. So I go down to the bottom of my layers panel, click on the half moon and choose solid color. And then I'm going to pick just kind of a light bluish green like a glass tint would be. And you'll notice when I do this, it goes ahead and it applies it to the entire layer. Now, because this is transparent here, this is where I run into a little bit of an issue. Even though it looks transparent here in the background, it really isn't. So in my smart object, I'm actually going to turn this into a smart object to get that transparent look and feel. And then when I go in and I put my color overlay here, I'm going to option or alt click and I'm going to apply my color fill layer so that it clips to only the pixels in the layer below. And I could use any type of blending mode that I want. Multiply is nice because you can see that it will go ahead and allow me to see all those edges. And I'm going to cut the opacity of this layer way back here because I don't want a whole lot of blue-green showing through. I'm going to keep this super low and so I get just a slight little tint of color. Keeping in mind I can always go back into the smart object and change it. I'm going to save this smart object and then I'm going to jump back into my original image that I was working on and get back into that while it thinks. And let's go back here to my shattered glass PSD. Great. So now it updated and you can see there's just an ever so slight colored tint to this. I'm going to name this layer here so I know what I'm dealing with and continue on. So this is all one composite. So on my smart object layer, I'm going to take my lasso tool. I'm going to put a selection around the piece of glass that I would like to separate out onto its own layer. With that selection, I'm going to do a command J and that's going to create a new layer with just that shard of glass. I'm going to turn off the original glass layer and here is my new piece of glass right there. Now even though I did a command J on a smart object, it's still raster based so it's going to just take that and it's going to give me this particular slice. I'm going to use my move tool, command T for transform, and I'm going to position the glass slice where I'd like to be able to start my shatter. So this is my first piece of glass. Now what I need to do is I need to put this into a group because each piece of glass is going to be a group that is going to contain the piece of glass and then the image behind that piece of glass which we're then going to enlarge and move to make it look like we're getting the shatter. So I can go to my layer and I can go to my layer menu and I can say group the layers which is going to be command G and that's going to group and put it right into a group for me even though I have one item it's not a problem. Now what I want to do with this, I want to make sure that my piece of glass is where I'd like it to be. I want to take my orange that I have here and I want to copy it into this group because I want my original orange here in the background but I also need a copy of the orange to then use to kind of mask into this piece of glass at a different size, maybe a different angle. So I'm going to hold down my option or alt key and I'm going to drag it into my group and place that below the piece of glass. And that orange is going to be right there and you can see if I move that orange you can see I've got two of them. But I'm going to mask that out so it's only in the piece of glass. Now I could spend some time going all around the edge of that piece of glass with a selection but I'm not going to do that. I want to isolate this piece of glass so I only see this right now. So I'm going to hold down my option or alt get key and I'm going to option or alt click on the eyeball for that piece of glass. Okay? Don't go in and turn these all off manually and I'll show you why. Jumping over to the channels here, I'm going to grab one of the channels and the red, green and blue are all going to be pretty much equal since we have a pretty much clear piece of glass. I'm going to take my blue channel 
drag it down onto the plus to get a copy of the blue channel. I'm going to perform a levels, which is Command or Control L, and I'm going to take my shadow slider and I'm going to slide it all the way to the right to get a completely saturated indication of the piece of glass. Holding down the Command key on my blue copy channel thumbnail, I'm going to Command click, and now I want to select the inverse, which is going to be Shift Command I, so I get just the selection around the piece of glass. I'm going to click back on my composite channel, go back to my layers menu, and what I'd like to do is I want to put the mask not on my glass or my orange, but I want to put it onto the group so that it's going to mask out everything in the group. So with my selection active around that piece of glass and my group folder selected, I'm going to apply a layer mask. Now everything inside the mask is going to be masked out with this mask. Going back to my glass here, I'm going to option click that back on the eye, which is then going to turn on all of my layers that I had previously turned off. And you notice that I didn't have this glass layer turned on. And when you option or alt click on a layer, it turns off all the layers but that one. When you option or alt click and turn them on, it turns back on all your previous turned on layers. It remembers the ones that are turned off. Now, with no selection active, I'm going to grab that orange that is in that group. And with that orange, I can move that slightly. And I can also transform this by doing my Command T and changing the perspective or the rotation or the size of that with that piece of glass. And I can repeat this process. And what I'm going to do is, as I go through and I do these pieces of glass, I'm going to turn this group off. I'm going to go back to my original set of glass here and use my lasso tool, go around and grab another piece of glass. And I'm going to repeat this process. I'm going to do my Command J and make sure I'm on the right layer. Do a Command J so I have my new piece of glass. Label that. I'm going to turn off my glass composite. With that second piece of glass, I'm going to use my Command T for transform. And I'm going to rotate this and I'm going to park this in a different location. I'm going to set the size and the location too. You may want to turn on your original one to make sure you're not overlapping. So your composition is going to come together the way you want to. With this, I'm going to put this into a group. So I'm going to use my Command G for the group. And I'm going to Option or Alt click that visibility in the eye. Go back to my channels here. Take my blue copy and I'm going to drag that onto my plus, my duplicate channel. Command L for levels. Slide that shadow slider all the way over to the right to get complete saturation. Command click on my channel thumbnail. Shift Command I for inverse. Go back to my composite. Go back to my layers panel. And with my selection active, I'm going to make sure I have my new group selected and apply the layer mask to that. Now I'm going to go back, Option or Alt click on the eyeball for those layers. I'm going to go back to my orange smart object, Option or Alt click and drag, and drag that back into my group. Place that down below the glass. Do my Command T for transform, and I can transform that larger. And I can rotate this, and I can also move it too to create a different look. If I turn those on, you can see I begin to get this really cool effect of this kind of magnification of my shards of glass. Now if we do this closer to the edge, I'm going to go and turn off both those groups, go back to my composition here, and I'm going to grab another piece of glass. I'm going to select the glass layer. I'm going to use my lasso tool. I'm going to come through here and grab this piece of glass, do a Command J to put it on its own layer, turn off my glass composition, name this layer here, and do my Command T for transform, and position this where I want to, maybe scale it up or down, whatever I want to do. And then with that piece of glass, group it, Command G, <clears throat> Option or Alt click that glass in the eye, go back to my channel, grab the blue channel and duplicate it, Command L for levels, go ahead and drive up my shadows so I get complete saturation, Command click on the channel thumbnail, Shift Command I for inverse, go back to my channel composite, go back to my layer, and on my group, apply that layer mask from the selection. 
Option or Alt click and drag that orange into my group, place it below my glass, Option click on the eye for the glass, and it didn't remember what I was doing, so I need to turn those all back on that way. Okay, so with this here, now I've got my composite in here, and I can take my orange that I've got right there, and I need to turn on my content in here. There we go. And then take my orange, where I have it up here, do my Command-T for transform, and I can scale this as well. Now, I can also right-click and I can choose Distort if I'd like to really shift this off to kind of create an interesting look. Don't be afraid to go in here and do this kind of Distort here so that you get this glass effect going all over your image. Now, this is a fairly time-consuming process to go ahead and do this, but you can go through and create this really cool shattered glass effect all over your image. And I won't bore you with doing the entire thing, but you get the idea of how you can take an original image here, grab your sections, and be able to go through and put your content in. Now, if you would like to go in and then go ahead and recolor all the glass at once, you can group all your groups together here. So if I wanted to color all my glass shards when I was done or do something, I could select my groups, group those together, and then I could do a new fill layer on top of here if I wanted to create a different cast on here. Of course, I can Option or Alt click that to the group, and I could change my blending modes here, and I could say do a, uh, I'm gonna do just a slightly different one. If I do uh, multiply here, and I'm gonna cut the opacity way back here. This allows me to get it way down and allows me to affect everything inside that group. So if I would like to add a different cast and therefore change the color both of the glass and my image, if I group all my groups together and then I do a color overlay here, that we can certainly do that. So it's a really cool effect to be able to go through and create that shatter.